Welcome everybody, this is Denny with Why Is This True and Get Wisdom soon to be. And Carl and I are back after a two week hiatus. Um, and we were gone because Carl came out from Chicago to California, to Northern California, to do the Lightworker Healing Protocol Workshop in Petaluma, California. So uh, we're back. Uh, we're going to be channeling uh, Charles Manson today. And uh, we have eight questions. And. Um, Welcome, Carl. It's nice to be back with you, and I would like to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself for people new to the to these uh, videos and uh, to explain a little bit about what we're going to be doing today. And then I have some questions that I'd like to follow up with, too. Okay. Thanks, Denny, as usual, to, uh, to you for hosting this and making this possible. This is a beautiful, beautiful outreach. It's really grown from its kind of early beginnings that you started independently and have helped me come on board a bit to add some extra things. And where I think we're doing something very important. I never would have predicted this in a million years. Like most people, I'm immersed in the culture. I'm a creature of the culture. We all are. And we typically take for granted what we see around us. We might not like it all. But we're kind of resigned to it. You know, it's bigger than we are. You can't fight City Hall. Uh, things are as they uh, have been for so long. If you look through history, <clears throat> we're just kind of eking forward at best. And that seems to be our lot. And, and really, the opposite is the case. We are being manipulated in grievous ways. And we're blind to it, by and large, other than the people watching this right now. There are a few who are escaping their cages, <laughs> and they're still free agents, which is creator's intention. And we're appealing to, to those of you watching to take our information and give it some consideration. We're not here to force anything on anyone. We're certainly not here to scare people and terrorize them. Although that might happen. <laughs> it's, it's happened to me a time or two because of the seriousness of what this represents. But it really is nothing new. We've all been through tough times. We've been through war and pestilence and famine and on and on. So why not having some E.T. interlopers <laughs> pushing us around covertly from behind the scenes? And yeah, we've it's, had like, it's, like 
Like salad dressing. <laughs> it's on everything. <laughs> not, my, not my flavor. Uh, but we had dark spirits from almost the very beginning because they existed before we did. This is the weird thing. There were many extraterrestrial civilizations that were launched in the nearby area of our solar system. Then the dark spirits had a falling out with creator and took a dark path and they fell from grace literally by turning away from the light and they were heavily corrupted and they have been cut off now from creator. The only way they exist is as parasites taking energy off of some living being. So they preyed on the ETs for thousands and thousands of years before humans were even created here on the earth. And then the spirits found us and corrupted us. It's all in the Bible. This is the whole idea of evil. The whole idea of Satan starts with them. It's an inner influence that we don't see and perceive consciously for most people. There are a few who can actually hear their voices. And, of course, they're diagnosed as mentally disturbed. And they can become off balance more readily because the spirits influence them more greatly. So it's a slippery slope and some of those people really end up in dire straits. Uh, most of us kind of limp along and we don't realize we're losing some energy as we go, but we do. And the corruption of the ETs caused them to be loveless and disconnected and very selfish and brutal. And they subjugated many worlds, ours included. And they came in and used us as slaves. Now they're working behind the scenes. They have infiltrated society. So this all sounds like paranoid nonsense. And I'm making no bones about it because people need to hear the warning. And if they're not going to stay for the whole show, at least they heard my piece. That's my little contribution. And I don't mean to hit you all over the head right off the bat, but it's better to know than not know. Right, and this changes right. things. It does. It changes how you view things. You know, you look at what goes on, on in the media with um, the talking heads and those on the left and those on the right in our country. And it's all a circus. It's all arguing about trivial nonsense. Who did what to whom and who told on whom and who let the cat out of the bag and who was poking under someone's dress and who was looking in their bureau drawers for, you know, things to shame them. And, and, you know, this is all, it's like high school stuff. Meanwhile, the country is way over its head in debt. No one cares. No one's doing anything. We continue to do war after war after war after war. And now we want more military. You know, we're ramping up for war with North Korea, on and on and on. You know, Syria's igniting again. So this this is business as usual, and it's all orchestrated. And they use us like pawns to push us around a chessboard and fight with each other because it drags us down. So if you don't want to be dragged down, get on board the love train with Creator and partner with Creator and ask for you and all around you to be raised up. And that is the ultimate answer we're told. There is a solution to this, and we can't do it ourselves. We're not going to have an outside rescuer except the divine realm. And when we turn away from them, all may be lost here. Things are getting more serious. And I, I've, I've said this before in the, the interviews that as I started down this path as a light worker and bumped in to extraterrestrial phenomena, which I did. I mean, they have implants in one out of 20 people. That's a lot of people. Yeah. I would see this in people who came to me, not for that, but for other things. And so I wanted to learn more about it, and I have. And it's not pretty. Right. I thought, well, okay, this has been going on for thousands of years. I'll do my little bit, and then I'll be gone, and maybe I'll reincarnate again and go another round and take them on in some way. But things have changed recently. 
there is a darker agenda. The ETs want to be done with us. This isn't good because they might just do a mop up operation and sanitize the planet. And we would be swept out with the, uh, you know, other lowly life forms from their perspective. Right. Oh, there's more urgency. And I'm getting that from creator. Now we, we don't have the luxury of deciding, well, you know, I'm getting old. I, you know, I've done a lot and now it's time for me to retire and I don't want to be bothered with this kind of go play golf, let the young healthy guys do it and all that. We're all in this and we're all going to be affected for all of time because our divine future depends on the divine. Now it really truly does. And then, so, and then can what, I can I butt in with something too? It's that like I, I and correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a distinction between rescue and partnership. Yes, um, and I just want to make sure that we understand that clarification because you said there's no no ETs are going to come rescue us, and it, it's the divine realm that will do so. But the, we're not really talking about a rescue from the divine realm. We're talking about a partnership with the divine realm, and the work that that the lion's share of the work here is promulgated by our requesting assistance and actually doing something. So it's like you said before, it's a vote. And each of us are going to have to find out what our individual missions are in terms of what we're doing and not just what we're saying, thinking, or parroting. You know, Because some, some of us are called to be very active in this in terms of engaging the other elements of society, whatever it is. You, know, you may not be into the YouTube channeling thing or whatever, but you might be an attorney or you could be in politics, or you could be in the medical field, or you could be a scientific researcher, or you could be working at NASA, or anywhere in any of the human institutions out there, and you've got this little burning itch that if something's not right, I need to speak up, or I need to do something. Well, that I mean, that that situation maybe should be looked at with a little bit more care and, and uh, scrutiny, uh, and see what that's about, because it could be the divine realm tapping you on the shoulder, trying to get your attention so you'll step up. And a lot of people won't do that because they're afraid. And they're afraid that they're not going to get support. And most of them have that idea reinforced by their circle within their family, their friends, their coworkers, who don't buy into any of the kind of stuff that you and I are talking about. But if they have a partnership with the divine realm, you know, for a lot of us, we can move boldly fo- forward and do what we've been called to do, knowing that's the, that's the real support that's needed here. Support from the divine realm and not, not validation by our friends, family, and coworkers. Because we're all, we're all in this together and we're all corrupted together. So, you well, know, sure. um, thinking that you're going to get, you know, your, your friend or your wife or your son to pat you on the back and say, good job. Um, that's not what this is about. Yeah. 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 This is really about us stepping into our own power. Right. If, if, if God wanted this to be different, it would be because creator has the power to make anything happen. So creator could separate the combatants here and send those guys packing back to their respective planets. There's, there's four different types of ETs here. Actually, there's five. But one is kind of like along just to gawk <laughs> more than be a, a big, uh, big player. The, the insect like yeah, ones. mantids, they call them, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, there's different names. Yeah. yeah. Insectolins and that sort of thing. Yeah. But but in any event, that could be done in a heartbeat because creator has that that power available. But creator isn't going to do that. Why? This is a test for us. We were given the blessing of free will and free agency. Totally. We're in charge here. Not God. This is hard for people to understand. It's up to us to decide our future and make decisions on a moment by moment basis. And if we drift away from alignment with creator, then we don't have creator backing us up, helping us around the edges, which is the normal course of things. There are always things we don't know we need and creator can help along with us and give us extra energy, give us some new insights, some new inspirations, give us encouragement, help to 
shift the energies of opponents so they're less vicious and so on. But that's if we partner and ask for divine assistance and support. If we don't want divine assistance and support, it'll be withdrawn because creator will follow our lead always. And right now, a huge percentage of people have drifted away from their religious roots and they're just sort of enamored of the secular perspective and and they don't worship, they don't do yeah, any. The, the whole idea of there being a God is foreign to them. Yes. It's not even yeah. on the map. Yeah. So they think they can do it all themselves. So now this new age movement has come in. You know, we're all spiritual and we want to be enlightened. We want to be raised up and we're looking forward to that happening and the ascension and and uh, increasing our own individual reach and our power and opening up our intuition and all those things that people would like to have. And so they meditate and they meet in groups and they do group meditations and so on. But never is God mentioned. Never is there a divine force brought in to be working alongside that is a choice they're making it through default and they're really running on their own power then and they don't have god aligned with them any longer they've chosen that so what what uh is coming from the channelings is that will be our undoing if we don't go back to actively engaging with the divine and wanting that alignment and that co-creation in a true divine partnership. If we just do it among humans, co-creating among humans, it's not going to make the difference. We don't have the reach. We don't have the power to stand up to these dark forces. We can't take out the dark spirits. We can't deal with these extraterrestrials. They're so far ahead of us in terms of technology and they have us largely under mind control manipulation already. That's why everybody's so complacent. Right. And that's why these kinds of stories and subjects never get traction because people are programmed to ignore it. So it bounces right. off and, and you won't hear about it on the news. So uh, it's up to us, those people to go back to their faith and it can be reworked a bit. You don't have to accept the, the literal truth of the Bible, if that grates on you, there are things that are uh, altered in there. I'm sorry, I don't like to say this, but it is really true. Right. They, right. This whole idea, it was interesting, we did a segment recently on prayer. Right. We've been given some prayers from Creator that have that blessing that will be helpful to help save humanity, to help keep us protected, and so on. And one of the things that's missing, no one's pointed this out yet, I'm waiting for someone to ask, but uh, one of the things that's missing is there's no prayer of worship, paying homage to, to God, falling on our knees and humbling ourselves and, and praising and exalting the, the Almighty. The reason that's not there is be because Creator doesn't need that. It doesn't want it. Creator wants us to be partners. We're not going to be equal to Creator in an ultimate sense. That's not going to happen. We're just a part of Creator to begin with. We're only a small part, an extension of Creator. But even that makes us divine. So Creator loves us for who we are. And as part of Creator, we do have standing. We do have uh, some authority. And certainly, to talk with creator and to be given assistance. So it's like the right hand needing the left hand to do something. You know, we right. have this thing to ask, right? Let's come and give us, give us a hand. <laughs> Help right. Us out. right. So hey, Carl, um, I, if, if just in the interest of time, if, 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 if we can, I want to get back to this whole issue of healing the perpetrator. Yes, um, I was so, just about to go there because oh, okay. this, this is this is where we're headed in this. Having set the scene with this dire <laughs> series of, uh, of pronouncements here, and we're going to uh, Charles, we're going to channel Charles Manson today. Yes, so yeah. this this could easily be the poster boy for evil. 
the uh, prime example of people and freedom run amok, twisting logic, twisting truth, uh, having selfish perspectives, preying on others, and the whole gamut of criminality, depravity, and really a kind of mutual insanity. And that's, that's what I came away with from living through those times in that entire episode. To the average person, these people all seem to share some level of mental imbalance. And they believed one another's perspectives because they themselves were imbalanced. And so it'll be fascinating, I think, to hear what Charles Manson has to say from being in the light now. And that'll surprise a lot of people as well. How could Charles Manson be in the light? Right. And it, OK, so I'm going to get back to some questions now. So so uh, he was not in the light. You did a spirit rescue. Uh, largely in preparation for this this interview. And one of the things that we talked about in, in previous uh, sessions was this whole idea of healing the perpetrator, and then we have fewer victims. And if you really want to ex extend the whole idea of healing, we focus on perpetrators instead of victims, because that kind of ends the karmic cycle. So my question is, uh, just for the benefit of well, myself and the viewers, is... is uh, if, if you go out and do a spirit rescue on someone who's earthbound, they go back to the light, but then the light has certain limitations on their interaction with us who are still incarnated. How does that, how does that episode actually constitute a healing of the perpetrator? And how does that, if it does mean a healing for the perpetrator, the spirit rescue that is, Charles Manson going back to the light, how does that um, episode or uh, event then help with the karmic connections with his victims and heal his victims. What's the dynamic there? What's the mechanism? Well, it's on multiple levels. Someone who is in that frame of mind as he was in his life, now trapped in the lower astral plane as an earthbound spirit, is not contained. He's in a dilemma because he may have a lot of trouble navigating. But he might actually be recruited by the dark spirits and be weaponized to attach to someone and then start to influence them in the same way he did as a cult leader, if you will. He's not done. He has an immortal soul. Sorry. You know, he's going to go on and he's going to be himself. Do you want him to be the self he was when he was down here as a human out of alignment? not following divine principles by and large? Or do you want to see that he gets healed so that as an immortal soul, as he comes and goes, he's not going to go back to the old mischief? Because what we do in life tends to recur. This is karma. It sets up patterns and habits. When we come back down in a new body, in a new incarnation, we pick up where we left off. If we were a troubled individual in the past, we may well be again. This could be a karmic predisposition that plays out. So someone like him might come back and get a life of criminality, preying on others, wanting to subjugate, manipulate, and be corrupted again by dark spirits, and then end up in a similar situation. So how does the spirit rescue change that? So so what, what happens is that karmic predisposition of his got worked on during this spirit rescue process. Okay. All right. All the right. way we do the rescue is to bring in lots and lots of healing for that person to heal the karmic history going back through time, even their prior lifetimes that led to whatever happened in the current incarnation that leaves them depleted and unable to transition fully. If enough healing gets done, even during that rescue, one consequence is when they come back, they'll have less karmic baggage, they'll have less predisposition to fall into those same energies because those energies themselves were altered and, and healing was brought in. So they have less um, less of a likelihood of recidivism going back to a life of crime or 
or manipulation of others, however you want to. Right. Wanna... So, so this really, this concept really speaks to the separation between the divine realm and humanity on Earth. Yes. There's such a what distinction happens? there. Right. It's like Vegas. You know what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. What happens in Earth plane stays in Earth plane. It's really true. When we go back up to the light, we're not having all our sins washed away and everything made right, and we come back as as a brand new shiny silver dime and you know we come back and we pick up all of our junk from the last life it's a project that we're involved in so that healing we did as a spirit trapped in in, in an earthbound mode also went out to his victims because that is how the divine realm heals they heal the perpetrator by taking away their misdeeds by undoing them but that helps the victim. It has to be that way. You, you, you can't heal someone of doing evil without undoing the evil. And if you undo the evil, the victims of the evil will have relief. So they have less pain to carry going forward. And so this has karmic benefits. Anytime you bring healing for someone, you're creating a new karmic destiny for everyone involved with that individual. If you're doing deep healing the way the divine realm does it. Okay. All right. That, that that's helpful. Um, because I just want to, I want to probably, you know, just add more clarity to this whole, uh, um, this whole idea. I know it's, I know it's explained very well in the course manual for the light worker healing protocol. Um, but for viewers here and our, our, you know, f- oh, guess a month or so ago, we kind of changed the lineup of channeling subjects. And we said we're going to go to some of the more darker uh, figures in our he- recent history and not so recent history to do this, you know, potentially the spirit rescue and the channeling just because of the healing, the healing aspect of it. So now this helps kind of flesh that idea out for people um, who had some, you know, concerns about you know, why we why were we we're emphasizing these uh you know these dark stories and these dark figures and whatever so we're 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 trying to have a little bit more of a mix in the lineup and uh, but anyway i just wanted to i wanted to get to address that and get some more clarification on it because the mechanics of 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 that healing and how it works and why it works is is needed you know people need to understand uh, or you know we should make an effort to help them to understand you know, why we're doing what we're doing. If, is it, you know, to show hopefully that there's a method to our madness here and a reason well, for it. And, and let me interject something so I don't, don't forget, you know, hearkening back to what we were talking about a little earlier, this too is a human burden. Healing the perpetrators is a human burden. Creator isn't going to do it all because it happens down here, you see. We, it doesn't happen in the light. When right, people go right. back up, they're in a different realm. They're doing other things. When they come back, they may be their old self again. Do we want that? I don't think so. Yeah. We yeah. have to be an instrument of healing for them. And we need the divine to help with that. But it will only come with our request. So it's on our heads to find a way to heal these perpetrators as best we can. And the best way is through divine realm, because they know how to do it in a thorough way. We haven't been taught these principles. It, it's a multidimensional healing quandary that cuts across many time domains, past, present, and future. And it's very, very complicated. There can be thousands to millions of influences on a person that leads them into a life of darkness, all of which needs to be readjusted. We can't do that as a human. But we can partner with the divine and ask for that deep healing for someone. And that's the way out. That's the way forward. The more healing we bring for people, no matter whether we like them or not, it's important because we might be their next victim. Maybe not in this life, but in another life. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's removing the hazards and imbalance, disorder. An evil proclivity because of the distortion of thinking and the corruption from influence that comes in below the radar. This is how people get this way. They don't choose 
to become uh, a white supremacist or a cult leader or someone engaged in satanic rituals and this sort of thing. It creeps up on them through corruption by dark spirit element and extraterrestrial manipulation now as well. And, and the ETs are edging out the demonic spirits in terms of the level of their negative influence. Yeah. yeah. So we have to start somewhere. So right. if we go person by person, we'll get there. Right. Okay. All right. Well, that, I think that's very helpful. And, um, so with that, um, I guess we, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Carl. All right. So just give me a couple of moments to, uh, get into the proper state of consciousness and then we will, uh, uh, you know, announce that he's present and you can have at it. And okay. you know, well, I think we'll learn some, some things. Okay. Thank you. This is Charles Manson speaking. Thank you for joining us. Can you describe the conditions for you before and after the spirit rescue, a description of your light callers and your experience returning to the light? We are very happy to do so. We understand your curiosity and we fully understand the vast ignorance of most people not knowing this calamity can befall anyone, including themselves. We are happy to serve as a case in point. Many would see our floundering in the darkness upon our death as a divine judgment and a just punishment. That is not what happened or why. My predicament in not reaching the light was not being excluded or cast down to serve a time in a place of torment a hell or a purgatory per se, but that is a good description of the dark plane between the physical and the higher levels where people actually return to be with creator and their many, many blessed loved ones in the light. My demise as human unleashed a storm of hellish proportions. This is not unusual. It is very common. We are not speaking as the dark being you knew us to be by name and reputation and history. We are speaking as one returned to the fold in the divine and having the perspective of a light being who you all are when you are among us here in the high level of the astral plane. When I left my body, I was set upon by dark spirits tormenting me and wishing me ill, stirring up additional fear and turning everything I thought and believed in my heart of hearts upside down and directing it at me to make me the target to make me the subject of scorn and hatred that I 
routinely heaped on others around me, feeling I was vastly superior, that I was smarter, that I knew more, that I understood that I was special and they were not and were undeserving of even my time and attention. This is an extreme of ego few achieve, but those who do are dangerous to be around because they may act with no compunction to harm if it is a personal gain for them. This was the mode I was in during my life, having been so heavily corrupted by my own inflated ego and encouraged in this by spirits who possessed me. I was their child. I was a product of their view of things. They cultivated me to awaken within me personal selfishness and a distorted perspective in seeing criminal activity as fully justified if it was in alignment with a gain for me. To see the world as a negative place, a place of ignorance and folly and misguided thinking. This was all encouraged all along the way by these possessing spirits. And I became more and more and more corrupted. While in the physical, I felt I was on the top of the heap. Even when I was incarcerated, and in effect, they threw away the key and came to believe quite clearly that I would never be released. I harbored that fantasy for a good long while because I was tormented with this notion and then would live through being rejected with appeals. Even in that environment, I felt I was king, being superior. When I left my body, I was thrown into turmoil and my mind was not up to the task of defending me against the harassment it was all turned against me. That very perspective was showered on me by a group of other beings, all of whom were far more expert than I in being the top of the heap in their own dark world. And they tormented me relentlessly mocking me, taunting me, humiliating me about my limitations and threatening the worst and most depraved and most horrific potential experiences, many of which they carried out. They can make a person feel the physical effects of torture. And this they did to me again and again and again. We can tell you, and this is truly not self-serving, I am there no longer. And I know the divine perspective about this. And we know others from the light have said the same thing, that no one deserves the fate of the earthbound spirit. 
It is not a natural event. It is a consequence of humans being so out of alignment and corrupted that it even happens. It is not solely a function of my doings that caused me to be earthbound, although that was a factor. Not being a believer in God was a factor. My being disconnected from the light was a factor. I was not looking for rescue. I was not looking to be raised up. I was confused and alone and immediately under siege. And that never stopped until the rescue operation was launched. And then things quieted for the first time. And this was followed by a shift within me and the growing awareness of something quite wondrous. What it was, was a feeling of love coming to me. And this was truly unique in my experience. I almost never had such a feeling during my physical life. Anything positive always had something tangible attached or was not experienced. It might have been pleasures of the flesh or a nourishing meal that was needed. But love on its own was unknown to me. And this is the plight of severe disconnection and being a functional sociopath deprived of a conscience because of disconnection from the spiritual level of the soul, the higher self. So when that feeling started, it got my attention and I did not resist because it was such a wonderful contrast to what had been going on. I was born upward by that very feeling. And then I had a group of light beings come to meet me and their energy was as well one of extremely loving feelings and I was bathed in love. Only one who is deprived can begin to appreciate how profound that contrast is. But I can tell you that it was the most magnificent thing I experienced since leaving the light prior to my recent lifetime. And this is the future that awaits each and every person when they transition finally from their physical lifetime. It is our fondest wish that each one of you starts from a different place than we did to not have this in-between experience of degradation and deprivation. But the love will be there and those who are ready will experience it quite quickly and it will only get better from there. You saved me, literally, from endless torment. I would not have been able to save myself. I did not have the knowledge, the history, or the ability with no 
accurate perspective and connection to prior existences to use as a basis to form a stra- a plan, a strategy. I would have continued floundering, I am sure, indefinitely. And contrary to what many might say, this would not serve anyone. It would not serve me to be punished in that way. It would only continue to darken me and make me more vulnerable and more pain-filled and more likely to seek retribution to harm someone else because that was a role model for me. Returning back to human life again would be much closer to those heavy, dense energies in the lower astral plane. And that would be, as well, my most recent experience in earth plane, coming in as a newborn infant. That would undoubtedly shape my early months and likely years as well. To be raised up and to feel and experience love will give that as a new springboard when I return again, as I will. And that will change me. You have literally changed my future and the future as well of everyone I will interact with in my future lifetimes. That is the legacy of love you have shown to me by looking above my dark past and my own deeds that are truly reprehensible, but nonetheless serving my soul as a divine extension and very, very much in need of restoration. And for that, I truly thank you. And all can learn from this saga that no matter what you may have done personally, you feel regret or guilt as a consequence. There is a path back to being in the blessed arms of Creator, enjoying Creator's love and acceptance once again. The biggest roadblock will always be your denial of yourself and criticism of yourself. Even though from your perspective it may be earned, that is your perspective as human, and you underestimate the true divine love Creator bestows on all no matter what their history. This is the greatest of blessings, and this is what you gave back to me in helping with my rescue. Okay, thank you. What was your involvement in the, with the Sharon Tate murders? <laughs> 